So basically, girls, the first question is basically find the domain and range of this. Now, going back to our previous lesson in advanced, the first thing you've got to remember find is what do I need to do with that? What do I need to make it equal to? Yeah, make it equal to zero because we know then if x is equal to two, in this fraction, x cannot be equal to two because if you put two in here, you get one over zero and you can't have zero as a denominator. Now to find the actual domain and range of this, how do you, what kind of graph is that? Do you guys remember? It is a hyperbola. If you have a fraction, it's a hyperbola. And this, x equals to two, is your as, yeah, asymptote. So this graph is actually this, okay? Right? Now, looking at it graphically, can we see the domain what is it? So let's have a look at this side, right? It can take every single negative and positive values up until two. So I can say it can take all the negative infinite values up to two in union with from two. It can take every x values infinitely going this way. So starting from two, it can take all the positive values going infinitely that way. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. How about for range? How about for range? So we're looking at all the y Okay, sorry, this way. All the, all the y values. It can take all the y values except, can you see that the graph never touches zero? So it needs to be separate. So it can take all the negative values up until zero. Does that make sense? as well as starting from zero, but not including zero, it can take every single positive y values going up. So starting from zero, it can take all the y values going up. That's all good, yeah? It's just revision. Now, that's done. Let's have a look at example B. It says find the inverse function. So we learned from previous exercise to find the inverse function. The first step is to replace the letters around. So swap those letters around. Yeah, remember doing that? And then make y the subject. So let's do that. So if I multiply this across, that. And then 1 over x. Oh, yeah, and then divide that. Yeah, okay, yeah, thanks. So y minus 2 equals to 1 over x. So y equals to 1 plus x plus 2. Okay, so this is my inverse. And once again, girls, they want you to find the domain and range of the inverse. So let's sketch this. Remember, starting with just 1 over x, 1 over x. I'm not writing it, I'm doing it in dot because we want to transform this. This is one of the x, and if it's plus, then so what are you doing to the graph? Yes, so instead of y equals to zero being the asymptote, now this asymptote goes up to two. So it's the same graph, but now it's like this. So instead of it being down there, it will be like this. Yeah? So this is my graph of that. From this graph, let's have a look at the domain. So let's have a look at all the x values that this graph can take. So can you see it can take all the x values? Okay, let's start with the negative side because we always start with the negative side first. It can take all the negative x values but up until where? What value is that? Yeah, zero. So it can take all the negative values up until zero. In union with starting from zero, it can take every single x values going infinitely that way. Does that make sense? Same thing for range. Um, it can take all the negative values up until what? It can take all the negative values up until two. two in union with from two. From two, it can take all the um, positive y values up. So what am I writing? Two, yeah? Are we good so far? The point of them showing you this example is, girls, here's a property. The domain of the function becomes the range in inverse function. Can you see the domain here is exactly the same for the range of inverse function? So that's a property. And the range of the original function when you inverse it is now the domain of the inverse function. So this is what I meant when I wrote that. The domain of the function becomes a range. The range of the original function becomes a domain of the inverse function. Okay? Girls, this is a symbol for inverse function. Okay? Now, this is not to be confused with what we learned in graphs. You know how they ask you to draw reciprocal of a certain graph? 
Yeah, this is a reciprocal. This is not the same meaning as reciprocal of something. Keep that in, keep that in mind. Okay, girls, let's do the same thing for B. Let's have a look. So they want you to do the same thing for this. And um, we want to have to look at it graphically why we have to restrict the domain. So just quickly. So this is my graph here. So by restricting the domain, that means we need to cut this in half. So obviously then graphically we can see this is two. Okay, so let's find the domain for this side of the graph and the other side of the graph, uh, I'll do it in blue because you can't see red. Uh. All right, so we're gonna, find, oh, we're gonna find the domain and range for this side. So let's find the domain. So now in order to know the domain, okay, starting from two, you can take all the values. So what do I write? Starting from two, so including two. Yep. And for the range though, we need to actually know that value. You know already how to find that value, I'm assuming. It's a minus four, okay? So from minus four, so from minus four, you can take all the y values going up. So that's a range, yep. So that means um, in black, in inverse, the domain would be what I wrote for range, and the range would be the domain. Yes? What's the domain for this side? So starting from 2, you can take, starting from 2, what is it? Minus infinity, right. Oh, you wrote it the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minus infinity comes first because that's a smaller value up until 2. Yep. And for range, same thing. Starting from minus four, it goes all the way up. Yes? Let's find the inverse. So the domain is, yeah, and the range is. Does that make sense? Okay. Girls, they've given you that. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to also find the inverse, okay? So let's find the inverse. Grace, you with me? Yeah. Um, so... All right. Okay, so... Girls, listening? I'm going to say f of x is 2x minus 5. And I'm going to say g of x is equal to x plus 5 over 2. Let's see what happens from here. Let's see what happens if I find f of g of x. We've done this, composing, composite functions. So what that means is if I'm substituting, I'm substituting x plus 5 over 2 in f of x because, yeah, is that all right? Let's see what happens. So basically what this rule means, and so it's property you need to memorize, if you substitute inverse into the original, you'll get x, and also the other way. Let's see what happens if I substitute g of f of x. So what does that mean? That means I'm going to substitute this into here. So let's see what happens. So 2x minus 5, the whole thing, and then plus 5 over 2. Oh man, my writing, I'm rushing this. Okay, what's this? That's gone, and then cross off this out, and I get x. So it works the other way. If you substitute the inverse, so the original in the inverse, you also get x, but if you also substitute the inverse into original, you get also get x. Okay, this is basically what this means. You're just composing f of x and g of x. So basically, um, this is um, this, and this is what I've just done here. What was the graphical property of inverse? If you have this, if you wanted to find, if you wanted to draw the inverse of it, wasn't it just a reflection? Wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't it that? And what line is this? X. Yeah, so I believe that's why when you compose the original and the inverse, the reason why you always get x is because you're reflecting about the line y equals to x. 